Peria Hefron, Anambra State Ministry of Health, and the Federal Ministry of Health. Indeed, Dennis Nana Arebodo is a proud member of many professional organizations, including Parastology and Health, Public Health Society of Nigeria, Entomology Society of Nigeria, to mention but a few. He is a postgraduate examiner in many universities, including, but not limited to, very prestigious Federal University of Agriculture, Abiyokuta, and the Federal University of Technology, Akure, and has served as a professorial assessor for many other universities. Those very close to Professor D. N. Arabada knew that he is a humanist. Indeed, he is a humanist, a Pan-Africanist. Of course, he is a Pan-Africanist and an intellectual activist. Many may not know, and it's my pleasure to tell you, that Comrade Dennis has a scholarship program that has run for almost a decade in his community, Asia, sponsoring students that came top in their classes. He is an impatient propagator of public good in any situation and organization he finds himself. He is a recipient of over 30 merited awards and has indeed rejected some. <laughs> Dennis Nana Arabodo is a family man. He's married to Dr. Oge Chukwu Arabodo, another hard-working, very hard one public health expert, and a former banker. And the marriage is blessed with three lovely children, Chibu Ikem, Udo Chukwu, and Ezi Mama. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, distinguished audience, it is my singular honor and pleasure to present to you the 78th inaugural lecturer of Namda Zikwe University. As a chief, an academic giant, a leadership icon, an astute defender of the oppressed and less privileged, a humanist par excellence, an intellectual activist, an erudite professor of public health parastology, Professor Dennis Arabodo, to present his inaugural lecture. Thank you, Professor Jaja Wanebu. I don't know what, whether what you read is just whether I am the one that you are talking about, but to God be the glory. It is with joy that I welcome all of you, my friends, associates, colleagues, to the 78th inaugural lecture of Namde Azikiwe University. The protocol has already been established, and I don't intend to bore you repeating the protocol, so permit me to stand on the already established protocol. That is the presentation outline on the slide there. And it is my hope that in the next one hour or less, you will gain one or two knowledge or experience or information that will be beneficial to you, especially in our battle to eliminate malaria in Nigeria. My interest in, uh, in malaria dated over 25 years ago. When Professor Dem Shupura seated here, please stand up. By that time, <laughs> by that time, we were all in one department called Biological Sciences, and I was an undergraduate project student, and she, we agreed that I should work on malaria, and that's how it started. From there, I came back in, two, in 1999, as an academic, and uh, started my MSc. And the interest in malaria continued, that I had to look at the malaria prevalence in my own community, Asia. And that work was published. And as we talk today, it has over 400 reads and citations across the world. When I defended my MSc in 2011, 
I continued with my PhD and uh, had the privilege of being supervised by one of the best, Professor Obiyama Mwogo. Retired, but not tired. Emeritus professor of this university. The problem in Enugu stopped her from coming because she lives opposite INEC office. So she called me and we spoke. I told her I will miss her. But what that lady did was a game changer in my life. You had my the greatest guardian of World Media Conference. She made it possible by requesting me to submit an abstract, which I did. Because sometimes it takes three months, he will be defending his PhD because we are about to conclude that project. Thank you, you can sit down. So, I want to tell a story. I want to tell you a story, Bobby story, you. Of all the human afflictions, the greatest tool has been presented by malaria. It is caused by a parasite called Plasmodium, transmitted by mosquitoes called Anopheles, and it has killed more human beings than any other single infectious disease. Malaria has also altered the course of history by striking world-famous leaders like Albert the Great, Alexander the Great, George Washington, and again his scan. The death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC altered the world history. The citation is that book, you can go and read it up. So it is a very ancient disease, existing before we were born, before it was discovered in 1808 by Francis Lavaran, and before the mosquito transmission of the, of the parasite was discovered by Ronald Ross in 1897. It has been killing human beings. It is so dangerous that it has made a world record in the Guinness Book of Record as the only animal that has caused more human deaths than any other single source since the creation of mankind. That is a plasmodium. Go to World Guinness Record, you see it. It is so important that the world in the year 2000 designated April 25 every year as World Malaria Day. And uh, August 20 every year is celebrated as World Mosquito Day because the mosquito that transmits malaria was discovered on 20th August in Algeria, born Algeria by Rose. And that day she wrote her wife a beautiful love piece. It's in that paper you are holding. The love, the love letter she wrote his wife to his wife, appreciating God for giving him the light to discover that plasmodium is transmitted by female Anopheles mosquito. We have five species of malaria parasites. We used to be four. But around 1965, human infection of Plasmodium nolesi took place. You can see the name over there in the screen. P for separum, the most dangerous and the most lethal. And that is the one we have in Nigeria. 98% of malaria you have in Nigeria is P for separum. And that is the one that kills more pregnant women, particularly those in their first pregnancy, and the children under the age of five years. These are the greatest hit by this disease. Of course, all of us here, almost all of us here, must have been suffering from this disease. And you pay malaria tax every three or six months, if not uh, less than that period. So let's look at malaria and mosquitoes. We have over 3,600 mosquitoes documented already. But not all of them are malaria mosquitoes, what you may call malaria vectors. About 430 are Anopheles. Out of these 430, only about 30 can efficiently transmit a plasmodium. And among these 30, it is only the female. Some will say, why female? Are they troublemakers? No, they are not. But why, why would the female transmit plasmodium? You see, for mosquitoes to continue to exist, they should continue to produce eggs. And that eggs cannot be formed without blood. So they require the, blood, man, the blood, blood from man, and not only man, from other animals, vertebrate animals, to produce their eggs. And that is why they are incriminated as being responsible for this uh, transmission. 
My daughter, Udoshufu, are you here? Udoshufu, are you here? Okay. Stand up there. That lady there, she calls this animal on the screen, small but mighty. That's, she gave you that name. Daddy, this is small but mighty. That's it. You can sit down. So before the year 2000, the prevalence of malaria was ranging from 300 to 500 million every year. Death rate over 1.5 to 2.7 million every year. Before we had the recent interventions we started having from 2000 that brought it down to what we have as a 247 million cases annually and the over 700,000 deaths annually, according to World Malaria Report 2022. The bad news here is that Nigeria, our almighty giant of Africa, is the headquarter of malaria in the world. If there are 100 malaria cases in the world today, Nigeria has 27% of all the cases. And if there are 100 deaths, Nigeria has 31. That is our dilemma, and that is why this topic is here. All ages are affected, but the most vulnerable group I've said are those who are under five age, children, and pregnant women. And the question is, why are they the one? This answer is simple. They are yet to acquire what we call partial immunity as they develop. Because as you are beaten by mosquitoes and you, are, you suffer malaria, you develop partial immunity. At that early age, they don't have partial immunity. And for pregnant women, once she's pregnant, she shares her immunity with unborn baby and reduces her immunity. So any small attack by mosquito, she can die from it. It has many consequences. But before that, let's look at the symptoms. We know of headache, you know of fever, you know of vomiting, you know of weakness. You may not know of anemia, some of you. You may not know of abortion, that malaria can cause abortion. Pregnant women have lost children because of malaria through abortion. It causes still bad, convulsion, coma, and death. It's common with it, especially of under fives. Among the children, it is a known cause of school absenteeism. And this school absenteeism makes students not to perform well, and they can carry it on to generations in their life. Among the workforce, it reduces productivity. So it's a very dangerous disease. You can imagine a laborer or a daily worker who earns on a daily basis, maybe 3,000, 5,000, and for one week, he is down with malaria. What do you think the family will see? Hell. So because of these problems of malaria, we refer to malaria as both a cause and a consequence of what? Poverty. As we speak now, to treat malaria in Nigeria, you will not spend less than 2,500 for a good ACT now. A good ACT. So imagine three persons in a family suffering it, and you spend 7,500 maybe every month. And you know the economy of Nigeria. We are the world poverty capital today. How will the formerly succeed or survive? So that's why we see it's a cause and what? Consequence of uh, poverty. And I describe this way. Malaria undermines the health and welfare of families, endangers their survival and the education of children, debilitates the active population, and strains the resources of the countries and citizens, limiting their ability to contribute to socioeconomic uh, development. The economic cost of malaria is very huge, it's quite huge. It has been documented that over 12 billion US dollars is lost annually in Africa as a result of this disease. And this has reduced the GDP of Africa by 1.3% as a result of lost life and lower productivity. What economists refer as what? Growth penalty. Economists, are you here? Economists, are you here? Yes, growth penalty. So we probably talk about that in parastology, what we lose in, in, what we lose in the process. So, beyond knowing the cause and treatment of malaria, as parasitologists, we do many other things. We try to know the life cycle of these parasites today about malaria. And one of the questions I normally ask my students, some of whom are here, is why is it important to study the life cycle of parasites? And sometimes, an exam question when I teach my undergraduate students, 
The answer is very simple. If you don't know the life cycles of parasites, you can't know the control measures because it is the differences of the parasite's life cycle that you target to apply or develop or innovate control measures. I'll give you an example. As you sleep under the mosquito net, the idea is that you are preventing mosquito from giving you sporozoid stage, which is the transmission stage of the parasite. As you are taking chemotherapy, any of the drugs, you are trying to attack the liver stage or the blood stage of the parasite. And if you don't know that this parasite goes through the processes, you cannot control it. So to help us appreciate more the danger of this disease, let me pause and let us listen to this. Watch this uh, small video. Back and forth between mosquitoes and humans. This mosquito is infected with a malaria parasite. Because she is pregnant, she has become hungry for human blood. During the bite, she injects saliva to stop the blood from clotting. Her infected saliva also carries the malaria parasite. The parasite rides the bloodstream like a network of roads seeking its first target. The core of your body's blood system, the liver. That's inside the human being now. That's Sensing the its arrival at the liver, the parasite, the parasite searches for an exit. A sentinel Kupfer cell is the entry point to liver tissue. Leaving the blood, the parasite infects a liver cell, killing one or more other cells on its way. Over the next few days, the parasite undergoes hundreds of nuclear divisions, copying its DNA over and over again. A single infected liver cell can create thousands of new parasites. Single infected, thousands, not hundreds. The next generation of parasites are modified to infect a new target. From liver cells, it goes to be a red blood cells. Red blood cells. Enters inside it. Multiplies inside it and produce other thousands that will infect other red blood cells. Inside a red blood cell, the parasite can hide from the body's immune system. The parasite slowly devours the contents of the infected cell and creates more parasites. The infected cell is sticky and is onto blood vessel walls. Once mature, the infected cell bursts, spreading more parasites through the bloodstream. That is when the symptoms of malaria come, at this stage. Malaria victims suffer fever, loss of blood, convulsions, brain dam, and coma. This year, 10% of people on Earth will be struck with malaria. Countless millions have been killed by it. Most people who die from the disease are pregnant women and children under the age of five. are usually vegetarian, preferring to drink nectar, fruit juice, and honeydew. Only a pregnant mosquito will bite humans, seeking nutrients from blood to nourish her developing eggs. So anytime it bites you, it's a pregnant mosquito. If she drinks blood from someone infected with malaria, she too becomes infected with the disease.
the tiny drop of blood filling the insect's stomach is teeming with malaria parasites. The parasite form that is deadly inside humans cannot survive a mosquito's stomach and is slowly digested with the rest of her blood meal. However, back in the human host, a few of the parasites turned into a different type of cell, one that is sexual but remains dormant. Malaria sex is triggered when the warm human blood begins to cool inside the insect's stomach. The female form of parasite matures into an egg. of the mosquito, trying to fuse. The male form takes a while longer to mature into sperm. That's that one, that one like worm is the male one, is the, is the male one. The other one is the egg. This sperm is from an earlier feed. It's not, now you are not having what is called specialization. Inside the mosquito body, now. The fly's cell can glide and begins to explore its new environment. It's now going to the salivary gland of the mosquito. It mosquitoes. migrates to the outer lining of the mosquito's stomach before transforming into a cyst. Those are the dangerous human beings, called mosquitoes. Each cyst produces thousands of thin, tiny parasites Inside the which mosquito, seek out and infest produce. the mosquito's salivary glands. So the, salivary gland. the next time this bites a victim, the malaria parasite will ride in with her saliva and infect another human. So that's it. If you want more, you can come around. So no mosquito is born with malaria. Know that today. Mosquitoes are born virgin of malaria parasite. They become contaminated by taking blood from infected man or animal. Because the one we are talking about, the Plasmodium nolesi, used to be animal mosquitoes. And it's infecting man. You see why parasitologists will remain relevant. Because tomorrow you see a new one. So in the 1950s, there was a global malaria eradication program promoted by the World Health Organization when it was realized that it was possible to eradicate this disease using DDT alone. And uh, most parts of the world, because we used to have malaria all over the world, most parts of the world become free of malaria by the use of DDT in the 50s. Developed countries you have today, some Latin American countries, some Asian countries. But in Africa, virtually nothing happened. Only those countries you see on that screen now, are the few places in Africa that had focal interventions using indoor residual spraying. For the rest of Africa, nothing happened. They told us that uh, that, that, that formula cannot look work for Africa. You can see that I put it in red, because there is also politics in malaria. So when that happened, there was a lull in the fight against malaria. Malaria fell off the agenda of WHO to the extent that in World Health Assemblies, annual World Health Assembly meetings, the word malaria did what? Disappear. And you know the consequences, more death, more pain for our people. But there was a renewed hope in 1998 during the advent of the rollback malaria. The Global Fund for AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria, and the rest of them and there was also a new global malaria program. Because as, it, as it's affecting Africa, it's also affecting Europe. You know, they see us as their um, farmhouse. 
from where they take resources. So if we are not alive to be doing that, they will also be suffering. So there was a renewed hope, and they established many bodies that are working together to ensure that uh, this disease is put back. And uh, there became funding again for malaria, promoted by WHO. And this body called Global Malaria Program was set out to keep independent score of progress of the fight against malaria. In the year 2000, we had the Abuja Declaration. Remember, I'm telling you a story. I hope you are, the story is getting interesting, small, small. In the year 2000, heads of states and government of Africa came together and they resolved that they should work to ensure by the year 2005, that's about 17 years ago, that 60% of those suffering from malaria have prompt access to and are able to use correct, affordable, and appropriate treatment measures. And all those things they have there, 60%, 60%, 60%. The question is, were any of those targets met by 2005? If no, why? You know, we are coming to challenges. Because it's a malaria story, but we bring in the aspect of challenges because one of the articles we published in 2016 was on challenges of malaria el elimination in the world. And that article is our most read paper, over 1,000 read, and the many citations. I said, OK, since I'm talking malaria story, really let me also bring in the challenges, since it's that interesting. That is the malaria situation in Nigeria. 97% of the population of Nigeria are at risk. In the southern Nigeria, where we are, transmission is all, all year round. In northern Nigeria, it's about three months. And all these affect the control measures. I've thought about the predominant species. Then the vector is Anopheles. But in Nigeria, there are two major vectors, Anopheles Gambia complex and Anopheles Phonestus, 60-40 ratio. And as we speak, malaria accounts for 60% of outpatient visits to our hospitals and clinics, 30% of childhood deaths, 11% of maternal deaths, and 25% of what? Infant deaths. That's the disease we're talking about. Remember I said that from 2000, the world started waking up. And the, that was the time I was also new in the academia. You can see that I'm a man blessed by God. The time of reawakening was when I was there, reawakening. And the, because of the interest to contribute to, this, to the problem, I became interested. And we promoted the efforts. So we have a lot of things that happened around that time. Global Malaria Action Plan, Global Fund for Malaria, that has committed 63% of the global of the funding for malaria. We have the United Nations MDG that ended in 2015, and SDG that started in 2015 to end in 2030. Goal three of the SDG is about health, including malaria. We have all these things. As we talk, we have tools to tackle malaria. LOLIN, LOLIN, ICT, um, RODT, ACT, even vaccine has been approved. And the question is, with all these available interventions, why is Nigeria malaria capital of the world? It is in trying to provide a solution to this problem that I and my team started playing, playing roles through conferences, researches, trainings, workshops, advocacy, sometimes activism, CSO works. And we had to found and register an NGU. You can Google it on your phone and see what we do there. Malaria Eradication and Safety Initiative. The program officer is here. So we are contributing to some Nigerian, not only Nigerian malaria problem, but Nigerian unemployment problem. Program officer, can you stand up to be recognized? That's the lady implementing Nanambra State. Thank you so much. So as we talk now, with about 15 other CSOs, we are working in five elite Nanambra State under the Global Fund COVID-19 response mechanism, resilient and sustainable system for health. To build and strengthen our communities to be strong, help the primary health centers to be working, and make the communities to be interested. And as we speak now, so many success stories have been recorded that even the Commissioner of Police, had Commissioner of, sorry, Commissioner of Health, had to say, please continue to help me. Because what they're seeing now, they have not seen since Anambra State started. The NGOs here, can you stand up? Let them come see you. I come in and all the NGOs. Stand up if you are here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. So that's it. 
But before we go further to tell you our actual contributions, because the story will not be complete without putting in our story of contributions to malaria elimination or control. There are three concepts I want to present to you. We talk about malaria control, malaria elimination, and malaria eradication. There are three different things. You talk about control when you have reduced malaria to a, to a percentage that is no longer a public health problem. You talk about elimination where there's no longer a local transmission of malaria. Therefore, the, the mosquitoes here cannot longer transmit malaria because no human being has it. You say you have elimination. You have eradication when all over the world there is no malaria incidence. That is a long time ago. So let this concept be clear. And as we speak, we also have what we call pre-elimination phase, which is when the malaria prevalence is less than 5% in the country or in an area. You say you have entered the world pre-elimination phase. And if you're able to maintain no transmission for three consecutive years, WHO will give you certificate of malaria free. When we come to challenges, you will see that uh, malaria elimination is possible. So we have completed some studies after that of ASEAN. And one thing is that when you carry some of these studies, you're not just talking about the science there. The people in the community become become sensitized, they have more awareness of the problems they have, and they start doing something about it. That is one of the things that come out from this research we do in the field. Community awareness, community socialization, and community mobilization. In Onisha, we have also worked, we studied 300 pregnant women on malaria, those at any private hospitals, we targeted them. You see the prevalence we saw there, 84.4% by 2006. Professor Dibo was among those that helped me to perfect this document. He may not remember. I brought it to him in 2006. He said, sir, please help me go through this, this manuscript. And after going to the state, go and publish it in the Nigerian Journal of Microbiology. You are the one. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so it's good to show your elders and seniors what you are doing. And some of these researches we did provided the evidences that supported Nigeria to gain attraction of uh, world funding to control these diseases. Malaria is known to cause low birth weight among newborns. Low birth weight is when you give birth to a child and the birth weight is less than 2.5 kg, or 2,500 grams is low birth weight. And it should, neo, neonates born with that low birth weight hardly survive in our country. Because we don't have the facilities to, to keep them to survive. They, 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 they usually die. And malaria can contribute to low birth weight. But before we, before we came on board, nobody has documented what percentage of low birth weight can malaria contribute. We went to the field and found that malaria can contribute as much as 45% of low birth weight in the main country. It is published and it's cited. This particular work is published in PubMed. If you go to PubMed, you'll see it. One of our few was in PubMed. It's, a, it's an ACE publication. We have several others. We didn't just stop on malaria parasites. We went to the vectors. What is, uh, what is happening in the vectors in Nigeria? We have what in Anambra State, River State, Enugu State, and even Boko with my students. And we found many things. As you can see there, Aribada et al, 2011A, Aribada et al, 2011B, Aribada et al, 2013. If you see, sir, you see that these are all are a border et al. Meaning that I have borrowed one for Nazo, I have other for any Nazo. I hope you understand me. Thank you. So in the Enugu State, I mean, she do do two years ago. We try to know the resistant whether this insecticide we are using is actually working. These insecticides we put in nets are they actually working? The ones we spray on the walls are they actually working? And to get the surprise. DDT no longer works. No longer. Even pyrethroids, those in science will know. Professor Wana, I remember what entomologists do. You taught us in 2002, as an inaugural lecture. About 2002. 2002. He taught us what entomologists do. Then he was in our Department of Biosciences. So when they say that I'm the first presenter in parasitology, I am afraid to say I am, because we are, we are in biosciences, biological sciences as a faculty, then parasitology option, not a department, and he presented. 
and the professor of is also there. They have all presented. So I am I'm afraid to say I'm the first. But if they say in current department, full flesh, probably I am. So, this is sir, you are the chairman of this occasion. We have contributed to knowledge, and we are still contributing. And that is why the Commission of Education says she must be here. Because we want Malaria to be part of the curriculum of our primary schools. You have to make it possible, Commissioner, I'm the Commissioner. I can see, um, Obidiebu, use your ABS, MD ABS. Use the ABS to talk about malaria. I can see Nabife, use National Light to talk about malaria. I can see all the media people here. Ekenemono, no, no. Use that avenue to talk about malaria. So that we can deal with, finish with this disease. The first one I want to ask us is, is it possible to eliminate malaria? Zanomia? Is it possible? If you say yes, it means there is hope. If I say no, there will be crisis. Where is the tega? I was arguing with Tege. Tege told me malaria cannot be eliminated. I told him because you are not yet sensitized about the disease. Well, that once exercise, you know it can be eliminated. And to prove that it is done, 100 years ago in Palestine, there was as much malaria we have in Nigeria today as we had as was in Palestine then. One man called Dr. Kliger decided on his own to go on a solo, a solo mission. What did he do? He started mobilizing sensitizing, sometimes individually, personally, getting people to cooperate with him. And to prove that it can work, he took a small area and demonstrated that malaria can be eliminated. And it was eliminated. What happened then? Everybody joined hands. Nufu, Obere, okay, New Mazi. Politicians, non-politicians. I can see House of Reps members. When you go to the house, push for malaria funding. Obi Orobu is here. Other House members, are you here? Federal and state. Um, when you go there, Intervene for that because we are coming. <laughs> so that, that man, Dr. Gelinga, did this. And as we talk today, Palestine has no malaria again. And as I talk, over 40 countries in the world has eliminated malaria. You can Google it. And between 2012 and 2020, between 2020 and 2022, 12 countries have been certified malaria free by World Organization. 12 countries. Out of these 12 countries, two are African countries. So if Morocco can do it, if Algeria can do it, Algeria has why can't, why, why, why can't Nigeria do it? That's the question. So malaria elimination is Africa. Is, a, is a possible. And Nigeria knows it's possible. That's why if you go to any state in Nigeria today, you will be seeing state malaria elimination program National Malaria Elimination Program, because they know it is possible. But are they doing what should be done? We are coming to challenges. So it's possible. So we tried to summarize the challenges into six, as we are seeing there. Number one, the greatest of the challenges is what? Can you, do you see it on the board there? Lack of what? Lack of what? Lack of political will, that is a game changer. We know you just finished election and you saw how it went. If we don't get it right at that level, we may not get it right at other levels. What would you mean by political will? Judge and one able read my citation. I want to know whether he agrees with this definition on political will. Willingness by political leaders, what we call politicians, to commit precious time, energy, funds, and the political capital to achieve significant positive change in malaria situation. Judge Awanebu, Anapuya, Biere Don Nabubu, Anapuya, I hope it is right. So that is what we lack. And the second, pro the second challenge we have there is the leadership, lack of leadership for malaria control in Nigeria. Nigeria are be the case malaria control to foreigners, because they are the one funding it, as I will demonstrate to you now. So they now dictate what we do. Even some of the figures I'm quoting, of statistics, is reference to the United States Presidential Malaria Initiative. Because your country doesn't fund research, just that 10 fund is coming up now, doing tangential funding. That is not the solution. That one is sporadic. 
We have resistance problem, climate change and global warming, and insecurity as exemplified in Nigeria by terrorism, insurgency, banditry, conflicts, inter-displaced persons. All these are challenges we have. And uh, that number six is very important because as long as one person has malaria parasite in his or her blood, there is danger. There is danger. So if, if malaria control services cannot get to the dukes and crannies of these communities that are having problems, we are in trouble. So we must improve our policies so that there can be unity, cooperation, obiaburofu, awenaga, to fight this battle. Let me just give you this illustration. If you go to any state in Nigeria where you have malaria control, hardly will you see the state funding it. Either it is U.S. Presidential Malaria Initiative or U.K. aid, as we had in Anambra from 2010 to 2015, some map, or World Bank, or Global Fund. Those are the people who bring the money, and they bring and they to you. But that is not the way to go. You, we should take leadership and drive the process to a solution. Because what they are trying to do is to market their own products. But we can do better than them because it's our own. To both this point I am making to you, just look at this table. Funding from other control, from donors. Take, year, take 2020 as an example. Look at Nigeria. Nigeria has 27% burden of malaria. Global Fund in 2020 gave Nigeria $106 million. Presidential Malaria Initiative again, gave Nigeria how many? 80, more than $80 million. The other one is what? World Bank, more than what? $5 million. The other one is United Kingdom, more than what? $4 million. Yeah? This is what those people say they gave us. So. But look at what Nigeria said they received. That's table 1B. Look at Nigeria there. Take 2020 again. Just hold on, please. Okay. This is one A. Eh? This is one B. Good. Okay, take the same 2020. Nigeria, highest burden, 27%. Congo, second highest, 12%. Compare Nigeria and the Congo. This is what Nigeria reported. Nigeria reported that this is what they received from these bodies in 2020. I don't know whether you are seeing it with me. You can see $6 million plus. Thank you. $6 million plus in 2020 from government of Nigeria. Compare it to $116 million dollars from Global Fund and $70 million from the Presidential Marine Initiative of U.S. That is Nigeria. Then go to Congo, which has 12% of world Maria burden. In 2020, their government spent $18 million. Why Global Fund spent $12 million? Tell me why they will not do better than us. Tell me. So we have a problem, just to do that illustration. Okay, so going forward, resistance problem. I've talked about resistance in the insecticides. There is also drug resistance. Some of us who we are um, more mature in the 80s and early 90s do know about almighty chloroquine. Cheap and affordable and efficacious. Is it still there for malaria? No. Why? The parasite has grown resistance. What do we have now? ACTs, which is what? Combination therapy. Two drugs in one against one parasite. It is more expensive than the monotherapy, which is one drug. That is a, that is a problem Nigeria should, should, should monitor and uh, follow to ensure that it doesn't uh, continue. Because it's a danger for the malaria control problem in this country. Then. Malaria is one disease that is sensitive to both climate 
and global warming. As the temperature is rising, Pomaria mosquitoes enjoy it because they multiply more, they proliferate more under a short time. They send with the parasites in your blood. And Nigeria should also monitor that to ensure that when the world is talking, they are also talking. I've talked about this one. What are the ways forward? Ways forward. Let us continue to engage, educate, and explain why our anti malaria works are necessary. All of you here today are now disciples in the fight against malaria, towards malaria elimination. True or false? True. So we should work for people to continue to support and we get their cooperation. And before you know it, we shall have malaria free Nigeria. We have current tools that we can use and we need game changers. That's why I'm happy that politicians are in this hall, those who won election, even professors that won from this university is here. Obi Orobu, please stand up, Nan. Kafama Nayim was a professor in the House of Reps. What for you? Washama Neba. Abego? Okay. Aborika Neba. Okay, no problem. We'll still see. Anya Furana, Kanya Funa Abuja. We need operational research, operational research to enhance the tools we have and innovate for new tools. We need more local solutions. When we were small, there are grasses our parents put on the wind and it scares mosquito. Why can't our government bring money to let us develop that? We can do more by planting it around ourselves and that in the evening, the thing will start going out instead of coming in. But you can't do it with your salary. How much is your salary? Nonsense salary we are, we are being paid. Yeah. Power is ending and the Professor Zonu used to tell us that the water must find is here. Level. I remember that your lecture. Thank you. So, on your show now, Obudike, time shall tell. In conclusion, my dear friends, malaria is a disease that is both preventable and what? Treatable. But we are facing converging threats. One of them is the needed resources to do the work. Before I conclude, let me say that Algeria that eliminated malaria in 2020, did that through only domestic funding, no foreign funding. Go and read about it. Domestic funding, that's what they did. They didn't depend on us and anybody. Free drugs, free treatment, free everything. And before you know it, know it they became malaria free. I remember that malaria was discovered in Algeria, Algeria in 1808 by Lavaran. Is Algeria richer than Nigeria? I don't think so. So, we should work together in addressing the challenges of malaria elimination to have a malaria free society. Thank you so much. That is my last story. Request. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, you can see that uh, no, they didn't give me paper. Please sit, Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Bikun, Matanani. They didn't give me paper to tell me my time is up, so I cannot thank my friends and my visitors. Permission to carry on. Thank you, sir. I want to thank the Vice Chancellor Administration and the Governing Council. The Pro Chancellor called me on this lecture and said that he's on his way to Lome, Togo. I think they're having World West African College of Surgeon meeting there now. If you watch, Ikechul is not here. So he called me and said he will join online. You know they bring money for these things, but there's no more money. That is Wahala. You know it's us that brings money in the university. But now we are fighting. Money has not come. Those who did well and more in the university did well because us who brought five billion naira then in Unizik. So now there's no money. All of us should do the fight too. So I thank the VC more for approving this venue for me. Because normally we do it somewhere there. I think if I need Zezo, I'm going to profess to be jelly. If I can see, I'm going to And we should revert to that. There are still online videos, uh, online presence there. The world is watching us. So we should go to that. We shouldn't go and hide and there with no lecture. So I thank DVC for proving that this will happen here. <laughs> and by the grace of God, when I told VC that I want to use this video, he told me you want to break a record. That's what he told me. I told him, oh, Bura Mune, Meno Shupune, Men. I have a barrier that I've been breaking records since I was born. So, this is the first electoral election in this hall, in this university. Yes. Richard, the Wu Wapwe and the Long Nation Committee, thank you so much. 
Where is she so bad and where? Thank you. Thank you for all the support. Okay? Thank you. The committee. You did one for? You did one for neighbor. Thank you so much. My supervisors and lecturers, I can name one. You did well for me. I can see Nsofo. She is among the old brigades. Professor Wana is here. Professor Vuato. I fought with Professor Vuato when she, he was head of the department. He's here. We fought. And after the fight, we became the best friends. Because I told him he wasn't coming to class. He wasn't coming to school. And he said, how dare you? He's there. Maybe I'll give him time to talk when we say this table. That is part two. That is part two. Don't rush to go. Rice and stew, very plenty. We plan for more than 500 people, so relax. So we thank them. <laughs> Colleagues in biosciences, parasology, entire university. Muno na toto, ekene muno. Many societies, PPSN, ESN, RSTMH, PAMCA, ekene muno. Thank you so much. I'm an Igbo man, I will add Igbo to my inauguration. The CSO world, we recognize you. The upcoming national president represented by the national secretary. Ujomo, please stand up. Pastor Peter Ujomo, he came all the way from Lagos for this lecture. Thank you. The state chairperson of our coming, Oneba. Shiomo Okeke, Chaplin. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Anyene is late. He's among those that brought to the NGO world. May God rest his soul. I thank SOMAP for the role that allowed us to play. Nigeria Malay Admission Program, Anabasi Malay Admission Program. I thank all of them. My second family, when I call us my second family, my wife always worries with me. She said, us is my first, fam first family. Now, yeah, but I know. Professor, Pro President, my wife says, Asu is my first family, not second family. That's what she says. But I say it's my second family. That any time Asu call me, I don't, I, I don't care again, I just disappear. So, okay. <laughs> So I thank ASU President, I thank all the shared persons. Unebuka, you showed me love by coming from all over the Federation. I'm most grateful to you. In the book, in the book we are holding, I say that the gate of hell shall not overcome the light of ASU. It can never overcome ASU. Because if you come close to ASU, look at the motto. Knowledge, truth, Service. What else? What did Christ teach for us Christians? What Asu is doing is what Christ did, challenging status quo and authorities for the good of the masses. Let us continue to encourage them. One of us died last week. You saw it in the course of serving this country. May so rest in peace. Professor Mwako Obato will be of Unisic, my mentor in leadership and in academia. Took me like a son after we forest more as a speaker of the students union in 1997 when he was reading communication address he said i want to thank in a special way dr dennis harry border 1997 students union president undergraduate and he called me dr dennis harry border and he added for sure doctor and i am happy that he was alive in 2008 when i became a doctor in this university Professor, ah, Professor Ifeja Ramwa Eugene Wana, you have added Mary. You now answer Eugene Mary Ifeja Ramwa Wana because you know the importance of Mary. Thank you. We fought oh, when he was DVCO. We fought. Ask him. We fought. And uh, in Wako's office, we argue a lot. Wako said, no mazia, no one. Leave these children now. And because of that fight, I love him. Oh. That when I wanted to marry, I begged my wife, let us make him our sponsor. And that's why he's our marriage sponsor. Thank you, sir. Itai <laughs> Kanem was a professional when I was a student president. So when we graduated, he told me, young man, go back to university. Because I am with the neighbors, I wanted to go into other things. I was targeting Salon I was targeting politics. He said, go back to university. And he's brought me back to this university. May God rest his poor. So, former registrar, University of Ibadan. Pro Chancellor, am I right? Itai Kanem is a former, former, former registrar, University of Ibadan. Please stand up. This is the Pro Chancellor of a state university, Ladoke Akintola University of Technology, Obomosho. 
That's the pro chancellor. He was Asu chairman when I was Asu chairman. By his side, he would be This one is a Yoruba man, but this, this cap is what I gave him to prove that he's my brother from another mother. I gave him this cap. No, be true. So I gave him a Ubedike. He's a senior coordinator of ASU, UNIL, AFSU, Lagos Zone, and IPC. They flew in yesterday for this program. Thank you so much. Sado, stand up. The investment secretary, if you see him in channels when he was dealing with those that call themselves, what do they call themselves? Ngige, Ngige, something, something. Please stand up. You are investment secretary from University of Port Harcourt. Thank you so much. All the branch share persons here, please, can you stand up? All of you. All the branch share persons in this hall. And all of you are you here. Thank you all. Thank you all. You can sit down. I want to thank two of my friends from my community who helped me to produce that paper you are holding. Because the university said they don't have money. So their names are there. One gave me money for this. They gave me money for Jota. I thank them. Their names are here. I thank Arebodo family. I thank his own family. I thank my Yugo Simba. Come on. This lady, the wonderful, I call her Angel. And I call her up now. On 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 more than more than three months ago. Oh now can I be cool low down? Cool low down. More than three months ago, more than three months ago, Corona Simu, go and start writing your lectures, your lecture. Go and start. Turn out easy. Oh yes, 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 we did. My miracle one. But she kept on encouraging me. I hope I've not disappointed you with this lecture. I wanted to talk on something else. I wanted to talk on malaria, mosquitoes, and man. The struggle continues. And if I say that, they will say, yes, he has carried us to a longer lecture. But I wanted to talk on that because my first taste book is on malaria, mosquitoes, malaria, and man, a compendium. Oh, no, no, Bagoria. That's my first taste book. And I wanted to talk on the struggle because the malaria, the malaria mosquitoes, and man, that is struggle. And the struggle is continuous until it is end and one day it will end. Come here, President. My religious leaders, Reverend Fathers, you are here in your numbers, Barnaby, Chaplain, all of you, pastors, thank you for being my friend and supporting me spiritually. I know that many masses we are saved for today. Thank you so much. My in-law, I don't know whether you are here. If I have an okay, in absentia, thank you. My students are here, past, present, they are here, even Fusho. That are here. I thank you all for being at the best in me. Capital. Capital. Elite Football Club. Can you stand up for recognition? President, are you here? Grand Hamano, that's our current president. I founded that sports club 2012. Today is the best in Anambra State, if not in Nigeria. You are welcome. When we enter part two, and America is saying, yeah. the Alumni Association, Oka Branch and National, I thank you. My friends in the media, I am I'm seeing all of you. You are most welcome. Thank you. Friends, supporters, well wishers, we are too numerous to mention. I thank you from sister universities. Oh, my brother is here, oh, Nabian, the head of Harry Border family, Prince in America, Nicholas Harry Border. Come. Retired but not tired. Ahamadike, no. Nairu Muniyanya is my elder brother. We lost the one that had seniored him in 2011. May so rest in peace. You are welcome. So, it will not end without saying, who am I without your love? God. But before that time, Shufu became my son, had to go back to Futo. We told him to school here. He said, no, they would think that because you're a professor, I got admission here. And he chose to go to Futo. And he's in Futo now, doing engineering. Nobody supported him. So he's already uh, an ASU member by being independent. <laughs> All of them independent. Although Shufu is there, Ezinne is there. They kept on encouraging me. They said, 
Daddy, you tell us, go and excel. Go and conquer. Today, go and conquer. Have I conquered? So who am I? Who am I with the love of God? A blessing you do, are you here? Blessing you do, that's your music. I enjoy that music, that number four. My son, my children sing it. Who am I without the love of God? It is his grace. If I try to tell you about my lifestyle, I am not know about grace. Embodiment of grace. Everything about me has been grace. I'm telling you, if I talk about it, one hour will pass. He called him Ebu. Okay, I thank all of you. Asu, share person now you. Thank you so much. Ndazia, umuanishi, afumono. Thank you so much. Celeste and Co. Collins, thank you so much. I can't mention all your names for the want of time. As you come in peace, you will go in more peace. Upoja yeah. agarabono. And uh, this lecture, please be our ambassador. Join us in this battle to eliminate malaria in Nigeria. It is uh, possible. Thank you so much. I like this. I don't drink anything I see. I never pray for this. I never knew it could Please, you can do more than that. Give him an outstanding round of applause once again, ladies and gentlemen. Because I don't do grace like this. Go back now, I can't do easy. Go back again. Go back That's lovely. My brother. I promise you, Bella, what for this is. Bella, what for this And I promise you, I will find someone. Someone. Take it up on me, my time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, you may resume your seat. Resume your seat, please. Let's, let's conclude. Let's conclude. Let's conclude. Commissioner for Health is here. Commissioner for Health, this is him. Alpha Mo Bidike. Okay, now, Gaga. Shock if any man at this Anambra stage. Thank you for the support. Agu Jogene. The Agu Jogene of ABS. On Amonia. The Barito man. Eh? Ah? The friend of the same. National Light MD. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm happy seeing you. All right, all right, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. Uh, actually, uh, we are moving to the next stage. Ladies and gentlemen, like George Orwell in Animal Farm, we said, all animals are equal, but some, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. You have demonstrated what you are today. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, permit me to uh, call on the chairman of the inaugural lecture, Nandazigo University, Oka, for proper decoration of the inaugural lecture, Professor Dennis Nana Arimodo. Uh, Professor Richard Owakwe, the chairman of the inaugural lecture. The son of Owakwe, please, up to the stage to do the needful. This is the only one, one and the only son of Owakwe. You're highly welcome, Prof. Please, may you do the needful. Who said you cost one? It's a busy, sir. Another banda. I'm in love with plenty women. I know my marry all of them. You know my dad, the shape of color. I go make sure, say, I must call it. I get one with be my sponsor. I get one with they call me holy. It's a busy, sir. One with they do me with you. Permit me to invite you to do the needful. Ladies and gentlemen, you got me real boy. DJ, please, DJ, please, let's, let's just conclude. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, on behalf 
of the inaugural lecture committee in Namda Zikiwe University, Oka, I confirm that Professor Dennis Nana Aribodo has successfully delivered the 78th inaugural lecture of Namda Zikiwe University, Oka. I invite you, sir, in the presence of this, our audience and our virtual audience, to so recognize him and decorate him publicly. This is sir. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Chairman, inaugural uh, lecture committee. Professor Dennis Nana Ariboro, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and the Senate of Nanda Zikiwe University, I decorate you as the 78th inaugural lecture inaugural lecturer of Namda Sikiwe University God bless you Please let me recognize the Executive Secretary, Anambra State Primary Health Care Development Agency. Please, can you stand up for recognition? Pharmacist Shisum Ushem, new Executive Secretary, Prime Anambra State Primary Health Care Development Agency. She was my vice chairman when I was chairman of ACOM in Anambra State. You are most welcome. Thank you for that wonderful one. Uh, please, before we proceed to a vote of thanks, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to recognize. Uh, permit me to recognize uh, some of the personalities in our midst. Um, permit me to recognize uh, Mr. Chido Obidiogu, Aguju Ogene, the managing director, Anambra Broadcasting Service, Anambra State, ABS. I say no. You're highly welcome, Aguju Ogene. Um, Chuka Nabife, the Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer, Anambra Newspaper and Printing Corporation, National Light Newspaper. We recognize you. Yes. Professor Emeka is on our own. We recognize you. Uh, Dr. Nelson Omenoga, Special Advisor, Youth Empowerment, Anambra State. We recognize you. Uh, Professor Obi Orobo. Member representing Oka North and South, Ijel Lengwai, <laughs> National Assembly. I say again, no, 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 uh, My own Congress Chief Rufaro, the landlord, who have been calling on you, we recognize you once again for the good work the Lord is using you to do in National U. And ladies and gentlemen, we are really making a very steady pro progress at this juncture. May I call on Reverend Sister Chine Melon Chine Jalon, to come and give us a closing prayer. Reverend Sister Chine Jalon, to come and give us a closing prayer. Why the Reverend Sister is uh, coming, if you look at the program, you have vote of thanks by the chairman, ILC. I told him there will be no need for any vote of thanks because James, I mean, uh, Dennis has uh, done everything. So it will be like uh, a repetition. So, uh, so he has thanked everybody just to once again recognize and thank everyone. So, so that Dennis got a waiver for logistic reasons. It's not as if the committee is hiding somewhere. No, this was a Senate approval. 
for every event, there are always some advantages and downside. In February 2020, the whole world went down because of COVID. And we now went into what is still recognized as a new normal. And we made the proposal that the university cannot close. We are delivering lectures through Google Meet while at home. It was at that time that we had the proposal to the university that rather than stop our inaugural lecture series, we should continue online. And the university approved the Center for Migration Studies, which at that time, according to what was then called COVID protocol, would admit only seven, only seven persons. And uh, it cost us not, not much, much. And ever since then, we found that it's a very good place. In fact, our inaugural lecture series now are much better than they were when we used to meet at the auditorium. Reason is this is streamed all over the world. But last week, when Uchenwogu delivered his inaugural lecture, we counted about 700 who were online, who ordinarily, some from Canada, US, and so on, who ordinarily wouldn't have been here. So we are not hiding Dennis. So Dennis fights everybody, but he will not fight with us. So on that note, I thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor and the Deputy Vice Chancellors. When we see you, OBSI, okay? Professor Mwan, I'm happy that, uh, that you came. I welcome, sir. And my Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic, Emeritus Professor Eguatu, and everybody, including the politicians. I think Dennis, you have said it all, as I said, there is no need for a second uh, round of a vote of tongues. So thank you very much indeed. Our ASU chair and members of his uh, team, we are ever grateful for the fights we are doing for the union. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. We invite uh, Reverend Sister Chine Cherem for the closing prayers. Sister. Uh, sister, just uh, before you close, Dennis, Sinon Waji, can you feel in a one model? Don't be in a haste. We are entering part two, which is as important as part one. So relax. In fact, some say it's more important. So relax. Don't go. Thank you. Um, we can take some pictures here, if you permit. Bef before, uh, VC, sir. Okay. Closing prayer. Please, may we stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the success of this academic exercise. We thank you for the awareness and for the knowledge we have gathered today. Thank you for the gift of your son who have presented this wonderful topic to us today. We are grateful. At the same time, we thank you that you brought us here safely. As we depart, we beg you that you take us home to our respective destinations safely. And at the end, that all we have learned here today will be for our own betterment and for the betterment of our state and our country, Nigeria at large. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much. Uh, DJ, please give us a music song. And thereafter, we begin to recess. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Yes, we have to research, uh, research in, in a reverse order. Of course, uh, in that form, the university, the vice chancellor will be taking the lead, followed by the inaugural lecturer and the senior, senior order until we go back to where we started. Thank you very much. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a very wonderful one indeed. As I tell you, as I, I told you at the beginning of this program, that anything that is worth doing is worth doing well. I thank all the personalities that come from different places from all walks of life to embrace and encourage us today. We will continue to appreciate you for what Lord, the Lord has been using you to do in the lives of many. Our only noble lecturer, Professor Dennis Nanarivodo, we continue to thank you. Please be informed that uh, after the reception, you will have to come back immediately for reception. Rise to very plenty. I can see my president perfectly well seated, as, 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 as usual. So please, after the reception, you will do well to come back for... Yeah, the reception is here. To the glory of God, the reception is here. Don't go far, we are here. Yes. Uh, the the inaugural lecturer really prepared well. We are taking the, the spiritual one, now we are going to take the physical one. Because uh, the body and soul must always uh, lay together for the benefit of mankind. Thank you very much once again for being here with us. It's been a very wonderful one day. Then please, I remain Dr. Chido Zia Obiora, the master of uh, ceremony of today's occasion. Thank you very much. You are very grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, people should also go outside for picture. Those that are involved. Those that are involved. Different groups, family members, friends, department, faculty, corporate chairmen of different universities. Place. We are going to take picture with the inaugural lecturer uh, outside there as the reception ends. You're going to be very fast about it. You're going to be very fast about it. Those who are in charge of uh, reception, please, we begin now to warm up. Because uh, very soon, rice and stew will begin to be plenty. This session is uh, not much of protocols. It's not more of, more, of, more of protocols, but more of entertainment, happiness, conviviality. It's a more of a conviviality we are going to take, uh, enjoy in this other part of it. Yes, I can see my president. Please kindly come in.